Colossians 1, 16 and 17. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. Amen. Thank you, Chris. Um, it is now time for our congregational prayer, and I don't believe there was any written prayer requests turned in, um, but we will remember silence. I know we all have silence. Um, those who are able, please go ahead and join me in kneeling. Dear Father, we just thank you for the Sabbath day again. Um, we thank you for the opportunity to gather and worship you together as a church family. Um, we pray that, um, that our worship service uplifts you and brings glory to you. And we pray for all the silent prayer requests that are on our heart. I know, I know there are many on mine and there are many on others also. Um, we just pray that you be with those and, and that your will is done with those. Uh, we also pray for Mike as he brings a message. We pray that you will give him words and the message will be from you and that it will draw us closer to you and lift you up and help us to realize the times that we live in. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. So last Sabbath afternoon, I went home and I was sitting in my chair and sometimes I go on to YouTube and I look up different churches that are putting sermons on the internet. And I came across the State Line Church and I don't know if it's a State Line Church south of Walla Walla, but anyway, uh, it's an Adventist church, another Adventist church. And the pastor was talking about something that had just happened in the last week. And I, th in the political world, and so I watched it for a minute, and then I went, and he he had on the screen a video of something that's just happened, and this would be two weeks ago now, and so I looked up to see what it was, so I could watch the the the, the full episode, and it hit me. This is prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. And I need to share this. And I went and I read Daniel, not Daniel, Revelation 18. And I watched the video again. And then I watched, and then I read Revelation 18. And then I watched the video again. And I was dumbfounded. And uh, I'm going to share that with you today. And I know this is Christmas season. This is Christmas time, but there are things happening around us. Jesus is the creator of this earth, of this world, of this universe. All things were created by him and for him. And you, we read that in today's scripture, which I did not pick the scripture. Our bulletin person picked the scripture. Um, what I'm going to do here. Uh, my wife said, are you going to have something up on the screen? I said, no. I says, but I want the church to listen to, to a little interview, a couple of minutes long. And then we're going to dig into Revelation 18. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to play that interview for you again. And it's quite shocking to me of how things are unfolding right before us and we don't even see it. End time prophecy, end time things happening. There's things that have to be set up in order for other things to happen. And that setting up is taking place. It is happening. So will you pray with me before we get started? Father in heaven, I want to thank you for this Sabbath day. 
Thank you for the Bible and the prophecies that are there for us, and we thank you for opening up this stuff before us as we see what is going on around us. Lord, I pray that everyone here will get a blessing from what I'm going to share with them because it kind of lets us know of, of, of where we just might be in the last days. And it opens our eyes to the things that are happening around us and that your Bible is true. These prophecies are true. The Bible was written thousands of years ago and it can only be by your will that these things could take place now of the things that were written back then. We ask that your Holy Spirit is here with us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, first I'm going to read Revelation 18, verses 1 through 3. If you want to look that up with me, we have a lot of Bible texts that we're going to be going through here today and going to kind of be dissecting Revelation 18 a bit. Uh, Revelation 18, verses 1 through 3. I'll give you a moment to find that. Um, you know, until I saw this video, I thought, when I read this, I thought, yeah, okay, that's pretty cool stuff, you know. Um, the nations of the earth are going to be following some kind of power, and yeah, okay, whatever. Here we go. Revelation 18, 1 through 3. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. So in other words, an angel comes. What is an angel? Angel of light. Angel of what? Understanding. Okay? If you don't think that this means understanding comes about, when you listen to this, when you listen to this interview, it'll change your thinking. The angels are coming to this earth to give us light in the last days. They are opening up prophecy for us so that we know that our Savior is near. We know that the time is short. I want to mention something. You know, about, about 40 years ago, these pews were full. And we decided that we were going to have a, a church um, directory done up. And I remember one family that publicly said, they says, we're not going to be in that church directory. And they were asked, why not? And the reasoning was, was because, well, we don't want the government to know that we are Sabbath keepers and that we go to church on Sabbath because we don't want them coming after us in the last days. Well, you know what, brothers and sisters? They already know who the Seventh-day Adventists are. You know why? Because of our credit cards. If we're in the stores buying and selling on Sabbath, no worries. We're no different than the rest of the world, right? But if we're not out there paying our bills and buying and selling on the Sabbath, what? That, don't you think that that raises a little flag? They know who we are. And when you listen to this interview, you'll know a little more of what I'm talking about. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Verse 3, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So, I looked up the word delicacies. And one of the definitions of the delicacies, it means exquisiteness, fineness, intricacy, daintiness, airiness, gracefulness. So it's all the nice things in life. All the happy things in life. So, I'm going to see, I hope that this works, that, I can, that the microphone will pick this up properly. And I'll have my hand on the stop button just in case a, an advertisement decides to come on. 
which I played this many times until an advertisement came on and then I stopped it. So hopefully we have some time to listen to it before an advertisement comes on. Okay, so turn this microphone on. And we'll see what happens here. Council for Inclusive Capitalism announcing a new partnership between the Pope, the Vatican, and business leaders across the globe. It follows a meeting just over a year ago in which the Pope Francis called for the urgent need for an economic system that is fair, trustworthy, and capable of addressing the most profound challenges facing humanity. Executives are now committing to the Council's pledge to create a more sustainable and equitable system. They include Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan, Johnson & Johnson CEO Alex Gorski, CalPERS, CEO Marcy Frost and Merck CEO Ken Frazier. And joining us right now is the founder of that council, Lynn Forster de Rothschild. Uh, Lynn, good morning to you. Uh, you are the brain, uh, brain child of this idea. And I'm curious if you could even just tell us how you convinced the Vatican and the Pope uh, to embrace capitalism. I went back and I've looked at some of the encyclicals, as you know. Uh, five years ago, the Pope uh, said that capitalism was the dung of the devil. What did you do to uh, get, get the Vatican on board? Well, the Vatican has asked for concrete actions to benefit all people. And in his encyclical in 2020, the Fratelli Tutti, he talked about rec reconciling the world of finance and the world of work. And that is what we are doing. Pope Francis doesn't point an accusatory finger at wealth creation and capitalism, but what he wants is for the creation of wealth to aid and not destroy the planet and the people on it. So we are responding to his call to reform capitalism, to make it inclusive, to make it sustainable, to make it trusted as well as dynamic. So, you know, there are people who will invariably be skeptical of, and they, there are skeptics of the ESG movement. I would argue this is another step in the direction of the ESG movement, but what does this partnership look like and what do these pledges by companies look like? So that's a great question, Andrew, and we understand the skepticism and we are not another group of people who meet once and, and are done. Um, we have 230 specific commitments that our guardians have made to inclusive capitalism that are on our website today at inclusivecapitalism.com. But more importantly than what our 23 guardians are committing to is the fact that we are asking all businesses, large and small, to go to the website agree to our principles, and then make their own commitments. We're not prescriptive in terms of what is inclusive capitalism, but what we do believe is that it's important if we're going to have true system change for everyone to do what they can, to think about what the Holy Father said in the Laudato Si' in 2015 when he asked us to listen to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. That's not... Were you able to hear that? Are you stunned? Are you kind of saying to yourself, wow, things are being set up quickly. This, uh, this, this came out two weeks ago and there's been 8,600 views around the world. 8,600. I know kids who have Facebook accounts and they get that many looks in a, in a day. Nobody's paying attention. Nobody's paying any attention to this whatsoever. The mainstream media is not picking up on this. Did you, did you catch there where she said, did you catch that that was uh, Rothschild, the Rothschild's, one of the Rothschild's great, 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 great grandchildren? The Rothschild family is worth at least $600 trillion. She goes to the Pope and says, we want you to join us. 
Did, she, did you hear what she called themselves? Guardians. Guardians. Did you catch it, what she called the Pope? The Holy Father. What, is, what did Jesus tell us in Matthew 23, verses 8 through 10? Let's go there and read that. It says, call no man father. Let's, let's go back and read that. Matthew, Matthew 23, Matthew 23, verses 8 through 10. And you know, I'm not up here to, to beat up on, in, on, on, on Catholic people. And here's the reason why. We're going to be reading very shortly that God has a select group of saints in the Catholic Church. The problem is, is that, there, that there is a man who is in charge of it who believes himself to be equal to God. In one of, his, one of his encyclicals not long ago, he said that we no longer need to pray to Jesus. Jesus was nothing but a good man. That's blasphemy. That is pure blasphemy. So what I, put, one of, so what I want to point out is Revelation 18, and we're going to read through that, and you think about what you heard, and when we're finished, we'll listen to that once more, and, I, and it'll, it just it, it comes out what is going on. So Matthew, verse 23, verses 8 through 10. But be, but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Jesus is our only father. Jesus is our only master. Rabbi means master, it means father. Actually, Pope means father. It comes from the word Papa. So I'm going to go back to Revelation 18. And I'm going to start out with verse 1 again. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, I looked up the word Babylon in the different places in the Bible to see what we have going on here um, as far as as uh, other areas of the Bible where there is references to Babylon. What is Babylon? So uh, if we go to, if we go to uh, Isaiah 13, 19, Isaiah 13, 19, this is in the Old Testament. Now remember when Jesus was here on this earth, what scripture was he quoting? Old Testament, okay? So with that in mind, as I'm going through this, I'm realizing that there's a lot of Bible prophecy, and I'd never really thought of it before. Maybe you're all ahead of me on this. But there's an awful lot of end-time prophecy in the Old Testament. There's a lot. It's not just Daniel and Revelation. The king of Tyre and Ezekiel not only refers to a king that an evil king then, but it also refers to the last world king of the last generation of this earth's history. And we'll read that. So Isaiah 13, 19. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Have you read anywhere in the Bible where Babylon of the Old Testament was destroyed the way Sodom and Gomorrah was? Have you read that? It isn't there. So think about that. I'm going to read that again. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be 
as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. How did he overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah? Brimstone, fire and brimstone from, from heaven, right? Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind. Just, let's just keep that there. Now, let's go, um, uh, let's see, we're gonna go this here. Now, come on, not supposed to do this. It's, this thing's supposed to work for me. Okay, now we're going to continue to read on back on Revelation 18, verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Remember what we just heard, that Remember that interview? What's, what's going on? If we go farther into that interview, there are 21 or 22 financial world leaders who are on that board who have teamed up with the Pope. The CEO of Bank America is one of them. The CEO of Merkel is one of them the CEO of Merrill Lynch, the CEO of, they specifically named four of them that most of us are familiar with. Um, I can't think of the other bank, but it was an, another bank. But there's 21 or 22 of them. You know when they first met? If you watch the rest of this interview or listen to it, the first time they met was over a year ago before COVID. You know what she said in that interview? She said they had to find something in order to bring this all about so that people would be ready to follow. I'm telling you, this COVID is part of a big plan. It's taking the money out of our pockets it's breaking our businesses. And people who are business owners, how are they going to save their business? Did you hear the Rothschilds there, Mrs. Rothschild? What did she say? We're encouraging businesses large and small to join us. Let's read this again. Verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. How many of you th really thought that it was going to be our Senate and our Congress that was going to make massive changes and change the world? It's the, it's the money people of the world who are going to the Pope and asking him to join in their leadership. And a year ago, he asked them, what can you do? You, you, you caught that. He says, what can you do to help do what? Save Mother Earth and Make everyone equal. Verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of their sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Now the pastor and I were talking a week or so ago, and he said to me, he says, Boy, he says, he says, Have people already come out of Babylon? He says, are people, when is, what's going to make that happen? When is that going to happen? How's, what's going to spur that on? What's that Babylon, that confusion, that, and I said, I don't know. Well, then a couple days later, I come across this. 
And if you go on to that interview and you look at the comments, you would think that every person that read, that watched that was a Seventh-day Adventist by the comments. I do not believe every person that read that is a Seventh-day Adventist. In fact, I believe probably very few are. The most of them are probably Catholics. You know why? Because you find this YouTube video in the Catholic website. And there are people today that are making comments. And they're on there. You, you need to go read them. And they're talking about the great confusion of Catholicism and how Jesus is our creator. Jesus and God are equal. They, people make comments about the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always working. There's, there's comments on there of, I don't know that I can be a Sunday keeper anymore. It says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Who is that voice? Are you and I to be that voice? Are we to be sharing this with people? And saying, hey, this is not, this is not what the Bible says. This is not right. This, 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 this belief that you can be saved by a man. Be not partakers of her sins that ye receive not of her plagues. Verse 5, for her sins have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. Verse 6, reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled to her double. Remember what happened during the uh, dark ages? This is in reference to the dark ages. God is saying, I'm going to remember what you've done. Remember what did happen when church and state joined together? That's what, that's, what, that's what the dark ages were about. Church and state. The United States was founded on religious what? Freedom. The pilgrims came over here because they were still butchering people over there in England. Martin Luther didn't nail his theses to the wall in Wittenberg and, and to the church doors of Wittenberg until 1515. Columbus sailed the ocean blue when? 1492. They were, they were getting away from religious persecution. They were getting away from the joining of church and state and we've got it happening right under our noses and nobody's talking about it. Nobody's given it a second thought. Isaiah forty eight twenty. Isaiah forty eight twenty. And this is a spin off of this in verse four. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and receive not of her plagues. Isaiah 48, verse 20. I'll give you a chance to find it there. Isaiah 48, verse 20. Go ye forth of Babylon. So in other words, come out. Flee ye from the Chaldeans, with a voice of singing declare ye. Tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. The Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. When is the end of the earth? It's when Jesus comes. We're supposed to be singing and praising and letting people know what's going on and being joyful. And then the Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. What does that mean? I did a little word study on that. You know what that is? That's that we are to be reminded that God took the children of Israel out of Egypt, brought them through the wilderness and into the promised land. Is that cool? Right now we're wandering around in the wilderness. And right now, there's some that are still in Egypt. The 
there's some that are going to go from Egypt straight into the promised land. There's going to be some that have never kept the seventh day Sabbath. That's why Mrs. White says it's going to take seven days to get to heaven. Because everyone that goes and walks through the pearly gates is going to have kept the Sabbath. God makes provisions for all of us. Just because you belong to a certain church today or just, be going, just because you don't belong to a church or just because you're maybe not sure about God, God has left every opportunity open for us. Are we telling people that? Are we telling that to our kids, our grandkids, our nieces, our nephews, grandparents, anybody who is not here in church with us today? Are we letting them know, allow God to come into your life. He will change you. He wants to save you. Invite him in. This week's Sabbath school lesson, we, what, what, what was it about? It was about learning forever in heaven. I believe there's going to be people that are going to be in heaven that are going to, that are going to hear basic Bible stories for the very first time. And why will they be there? Because they want God in their lives. Because they put their faith and their trust in God and not in man. And right now, what's the world doing? Putting its faith and its trust in man. The Pope and these big leaders are going to save the earth. They're going to save Mother Earth. Not going to happen. Let's see here. Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled to her double. Verse 7. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she says in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. This is talking about an entity. This is talking about a, this is talking about, and this is not talking about a singular person. This is talking about an entity. Now, when we have the merchants of the earth, who have gone to the Pope a year ago and said, we want to do what you have asked. And two weeks ago, they have a big group and they have a big group photo. If anybody wants to see it, see me after church. I'll show it to you. They have a big group photo. The merchants of the earth are going to save the earth along with the help of the religious leadership of the Pope. That completely takes God out of the picture. That's what Revelation 18 is about. It's happening right here before our very eyes. Jeremiah 50, verse 8. Jeremiah 50, verse 8. This is more talking about getting out of Babylon. Must be pretty important. Old Testament, it's talked about. The New Testament, it's talked about. Jeremiah 50, verse 8. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he goats before the flocks. You ever seen a he goat? They don't follow. They lead. And it doesn't matter what's in front of them. They go straight forward. They put down their head and they move. This says, get out of there. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let anything get in your way. Jeremiah 51, verse 6. 
Jeremiah 51, verse 6. This talks about fleeing. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. I, uh, Jeremiah 51, 45. My people, go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. Zechariah 2, 7. Zechariah 2, 7. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Who is Zion? It's God's chosen. If we have Catholic brothers and sisters, we need to be sharing the gospel with them. The Bible tells us, and I could go on and on and on, the Bible tells us over and over and over again, God has a remnant in the Catholic Church. Now, if you look up, if you go on to the papal website, and if you look up Sabbath, they've got a big thing in there. And it talks about the Sabbath. And it says the seventh day Sabbath is God's Sabbath. It says the seventh day Adventist church keeps God's Sabbath. Then it says, there's a question. Why do we keep Sunday as Catholics? And it says, because the mother church has the prerogative to change the Sabbath to Sunday. Then it says, therefore, and I've read this many times, therefore, if you go to church on Sunday, you are a Catholic. So when I read that, and when I read this, this is telling me that we've got a work to do. If we have friends that are going to church on Sunday, we need to be asking them, why are you keeping man's Sabbath? The Catholic Church flat out says, it is our prerogative to change the Sabbath to Sunday. If you go to church on Sunday, you are a Catholic, period. And over and over and over in the Bible, it says, get out. Get out. Are we telling that to people? I'll go back to, uh, I'm going to go to Exodus. I already mentioned this, but I want to read this to you. In Isaiah 48, verse 20, I'll read that once more, and then we're going to go to Exodus 19, 4. In Isaiah 48, 20, it says, Go ye forth of Babylon, flee ye from the Chaldeans, with a voice of singing, declare ye, tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. So this is in the last days. The Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. Now, the Lord hath reserved hath redeemed his servant Jacob. Exodus 19, 4 says, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. We need to be telling people. God took people out of Egypt. He took them through the wilderness. He took care of them for 40 years. They had manna. They ate angel's food. God's going to take care of us in the last days. And if we don't honestly, 100% believe that God's going to take care of us in the last days, we have a problem. And here's why. Revelation 21. 
Let's see, where is it here? Here we go. Revelation 21, verse 8. Revelation 21, verse 8. Actually, let's go back to verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. And I'll add, and daughter. He that what? Overcomes. Is it easy? No. Is it possible? Yes. He that overcomes. Verse 8. But the fearful. Let's not be fearful. But the fearful and unbelieving. Let's believe that God's going to get us through this. Let's believe that God's got this. Let's believe that God has made a way. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers, idolaters, liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. If we are fearful and unbelieving, we're no different than any of those others. That's a scary thought. I mean, I find myself at times wondering, God, where are you? Where are you in all this? Let's make sure that we're not part of that group. Let's make sure that we're telling people, that we're sharing with people. We have to remember God took the children of Israel out of Egypt. The earth today is spiritual Egypt. God wants to take us out of Egypt. Now I'm going to go back. Let's play this for you once more. A new partnership between the Pope, the Vatican, and business leaders across the globe. It follows a meeting just over a year ago in which the Pope Francis called for the urgent need for an economic system that is fair, trustworthy, and capable of addressing the most profound challenges facing humanity. Executives are now committing to the Council's pledge to create a more sustainable and equitable system. They include Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan, Johnson & Johnson CEO Alex Gorski, CalPERS CEO Marcy Frost, and Merck CEO Ken Frazier. And joining us right now is the founder of that council, Lynn Forster de Rothschild. Uh, Lynn, good morning to you. Uh, you are the brain, uh, brain child of this idea, and I'm curious if you could even just tell us how you convinced the Vatican and the Pope uh, to embrace capitalism. I went back and I've looked at some of the encyclicals, as you know, uh, five years ago, the Pope uh, said that capitalism was the dung of the devil. What did you do to uh, get, get the Vatican on board? Well, the Vatican has asked for concrete actions to benefit all people. And in his encyclical in 2020, the Fratelli Tutti, he talked about rec reconciling the world of finance and the world of work. And that is what we are doing. Pope Francis doesn't point an accusatory finger at wealth creation and capitalism. But what he wants is for the creation of wealth to aid and not destroy the planet and the people on it. So we are responding to his call to reform capitalism, to make it inclusive, to make it sustainable, to make it trusted as well as dynamic. So, you know, there are people who will invariably be skeptical of, and they, there are skeptics of the ESG movement. I would argue this is another step in the direction of the ESG movement, but what does this partnership look like and what do these pledges by companies look like? So that's a great question, Andrew, and we understand the skepticism, and we are not another group of people who meet once and, and are done. Um, we have 230 specific commitments that our guardians have made to inclusive capitalism that are on our website today at inclusivecapitalism.com. But more importantly than what our 23 guardians are committing to 
is the fact that we are asking all businesses, large and small, to go to the website, agree to our principles, and then make their own commitments. We're not prescriptive in terms of what is inclusive capitalism, but what we do believe is that it's important if we're going to have true system change for everyone to do what they can, to think about what the Holy Father said in the Laudato Si in 2015 when he asked us to listen to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. That's not a religious imperative, that's a moral imperative. So okay. most Does that make you think about Revelation 18 a little bit differently? So where are we? We're at the end of the world. Things are lining up. Things are lining up quickly right under our nose and we don't even know it. And you want to guess what news channel that that was? It's not an offshoot. CNBC. And nobody's paying any attention. Not thinking a word of it. So, what has to happen before... What has to happen be, be, before verse 18, uh, uh, be, be, before verse 3 in chapter 18 says, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. It's being set up right now. Right before our eyes. Now, I don't know if it's going to take a year, six months, two years, five years, but there are, alliance, there, there are alliances being made between church and state very quickly. Don't be worried about who is going to be our, our next president. Our next president is not going to affect this one bit. This is the banking leaders. This is the money people of the world. And down farther down in Revelation 18, it says that if you're not part of them, you will not buy or sell. How is that possible? It's very possible when you have all of the banking leaders, all the money people of the world on the same committee. That's how it's possible. It's not, it's, this is not a little thing. This is starting out in Europe. And where did religious persecution start with the first time? In Europe. The United States is the last stand of religious freedom. Let's take advantage of it. Father in heaven, again, we thank you for the Sabbath. We thank you for setting it aside. We thank you for the prophecies that you've given us in the Bible that are way marks to show us where we're at, to show us where we may be in Earth's history. As we've been studying here today, the merchants of the Earth have to come together with the religious system. But they're going to have their due to pay. Lord, give us the strength and the courage. Give us the, uh, the willingness to tell those that don't understand the truth about the Sabbath. Help us to have the courage that we will speak up and speak out, and that the words that we speak will be from you, that we don't step on people's toes or hurt people's feelings, but that it pricks their interest and they want to know more. The Bible says that there's going to be a great calling out of Babylon, out of confusion. Let us be part of that. In Jesus' name, amen.